Is half a large intestine equal to one semicolon? Are 2,000 mockingbirds equal to two kilo mockingbirds? Are 16.5 feet in a twilight zone equal to one rod serling? Get out your yardsticks. We're examining fake units of measurements on all hell retcon. M B M E M D D D writes, In an episode of Transformers, Hook of the Constructicon says, I can perform flawlessly to within one five hundred thousandth of a Cybertronic mini-inch. What the hell is a Cybertronic mini-inch? I suppose M B M E M D D D thinks that his question will make him a hip dude and increase his coolness by five to ten megafonzies. But I don't believe that for one second. How about 52 minutes and 34 seconds to be exact? That's the length of a microcentury, a term coined by mathematician John von Neumann. Hello, Neumann. Neumann said a microcentury denoted the maximum length of a lecture. Clearly, he never sat in on a cinema studies class at New York University, because if he did, he would have definitely learned about the Kessel Run. The Millennium Falcon, piloted by Han Solo, was able to do the Kessel Run in less than 12 parsecs. I know what you're thinking. If the parsec is a unit of distance, not time, then wouldn't the Kessel Run be measured in time completed opposed to distance traveled? Well, you can ask the question, but the last person that asked didn't turn out too well. In space, distances can be very vast. If you were Klingon, you would use the Kelly Cam to measure distances in space. However, unlike those uncouth warriors, real scientists use a unit of measurement called the Sagan, a large unit of anything. Your mama so big her pants size is Sagan. Not bad, eh? You remember Carl Sagan, right? How about Oliver Smoot? If you walk the bridge from MIT to Boston, it's 364.4 Smoots long. The Smoot is named after Oliver Smoot, who at 5 foot 7 inches laid down on the Harvard Bridge and had his friends roll his body from the bridge's beginning to end 364.4 times, give or take the length of an ear. Nerd. Perhaps you're considering ways of becoming obscurely famous just like Mr. Smoot. After all, didn't Andy Warhol say everyone was going to be famous for 15 minutes? Nowadays, we've gone from 15 minutes of fame to 15 megabytes of fame. But nonetheless, if you want to measure your fame, you can do so in Warhols, Kilo Warhols, and, you guessed it, Mega Warhols. Perhaps Andy Warhol's a bit old school, and you prefer something more high-tech, like the app Clout, which aggregates your social networking activities that gives you a score to determine how savvy you are socially online. If you're just on Twitter, then you're measuring your views in something called Wheatons. I aspire one day to be at one milli Wheaton. So, MBMEMDDD, to answer your question about a Cybertronic mini-inch, it's of course super tiny. It's between one henna, the unit of measurement found on Farscape, and one beard second, the distance that a person's beard grows in one second. Approximately five nanometers. Question of the day. If you had a unit of measurement named after you, what would it be and what would it measure? My unit of measurement would be <laughs> the retcon. And a retcon would measure the effort you need to make something work retroactively in the past. Check out these examples of previous episodes to see how many retcon units went into making them. And while you're at it, click on the subscribe button. To do so only cost me three CTAs. A CTA is the amount of energy a YouTube content creator expends to get someone to click the subscribe button.